In today's video, we're gonna discuss what's called the five day clear and present danger notice. It's a really effective notice that landlords have to deal with tenants who are engaged in criminal activity. I'm gonna give you all the details in this video. Now, there are some specific things about this notice that I wanna talk about here. The first one is, this was passed in 2016 at the request of the industry, quite frankly, to deal with some major issues. There were a lot of things and activities that tenants were doing uh, that, that posed a clear and present danger to not only the landlord or manager, but their staff, uh, the, the fellow residents within the community. So there was a need for this change and the legislature came through because before, if there was a tenant that was uh, violent, if they were threatening, if they were dealing drugs, et cetera, the only thing we could do is give them a 14, 30 day notice. And you all know how difficult that is to get rid of a tenant under the 14, 30 day notice. Number two is, bullet point number two is, this is a landlord notice only. This, this isn't like the 1430 where the tenant can use it against the landlord. It's only a landlord notice. And number three is, for the most part, this is an incurable notice. Unlike the seven day notice to pay or quit for non-payment of rent, if that tenant brings that rent money within that notice period, then it's curable. 14, 30 day notice. If that tenant stops that breach within that 14 day period, it is curable. For the most part, the five day notice is not curable. There are two exceptions we're gonna talk about here, uh, but for the most part, it's an incurable notice. Now the requirements that must exist for a landlord to serve this notice is on your screen here. If the tenant is engaged in, and by this I mean if it's the tenant themselves, a fellow tenant, a per person that's authorized to be there, a guest of the tenant, or a person that is under the direct control of the tenant. So let's say that the tenant is babysitting it and uh, they're in control of that person. All of those people would apply to this notice. So if the tenant is engaged in any violent criminal activities on the premises, if the tenant is illegally uh, selling a controlled substance, so they're dealing drugs basically, or this is important here, bullet point number three, they are engaged in other activities that threaten the health and safety of the landlord, their staff agents or other residents, then this is the notice that we can use. Uh, we can still use a 1430 if we want to, but why not use the five day clear and present danger notice? Um, the third bullet point I wanna talk about a little bit because there are landlords and managers that are using this notice effectively to get rid of tenants who continually smoke pot in their, in their apartment. And then we have all the other residents complaining about it. This is a really effective tool to use because that is dealing with the health and the safety of the landlord. I also have known landlords to use this for a, a tenant that is smoking and you've told them not to smoke and yet they continue. This is another effective uh, notice to use. Now, if any of these elements exist here, out of these three bullet points, then the landlord can serve the tenant a five day clear and present danger notice. Today's video is sponsored by Tenant Data. I assume you're all doing some kind of tenant screening and if you're not, shame on you. You may be using some national company to do your screening and secondly, shame on you. Use Tenant Data. They are headquartered in Nebraska. Their entire portfolio of services and tools that they provide for you to screen your tenants and your applicants is based on Nebraska. John and his staff have literally decades of property management experience themselves, so they know exactly what you need as a property manager to get the job done. The best defense against renting to a bad tenant is not to rent to them in the first place, and the only, the only way that you can do that is to use a company like Tenant Data. I highly recommend these guys, I'm serious folks. And here is their contact information. And when you do contact them, tell them that Paul sent you. They're gonna treat you like gold, I promise you. Now, as I said previously in this video, for the most part, the five day clear and present danger notice is incurable, but there are two instances when it is curable by the tenant. The first one is bullet point number one, the tenant seeks some type of protective order or restraining order. I have seen this where two tenants get into it and there was violence that occurred on the premises. So therefore the five day clear and present danger notice is, is valid. So one of the tenants, they go and they get a restraining order against their neighbor. In that case, you could not 
serve that tenant a, well, you could serve the tenant a five-day clear and present danger notice, but you could not evict them. The second bullet point, the tenant reports the criminal activity to law enforcement in an attempt to initiate some type of investigation. Uh, I, I was actually involved in a case where a mother and her minor child lived in an apartment and the child was dealing pot. He was drug dealing out of the apartment and the tenant got a five day clear and present danger notice appropriately from the manager. She ended up calling the police on her own kid. Now the police in the long run ended up doing nothing. However, she could not be evicted because she did her part according to the statute. She called the police. She has no control over whether the police is going to go through with an investigation, but she did her part. Therefore, she, uh, she could not be evicted, even though she got legitimately that five-day clear and present danger notice. Those are the only two exceptions to this incurable uh, notice. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how functionally this notice works. And you might see the schematic on your screen and probably have seen this in the videos where I did the seven day notice. In Nebraska, there is a strict service process that you have to adhere to when you're serving these notices and the five day notice is no different. So let's say, for example, in our example here, the the date of the activity, let's say the, the violence, drug dealing, whatever the case may be, that's going to invoke this notice happened on the 10th of the month. That is the date of activity. So on the 11th, you serve your notice. That is what we call a service day. That is not the first of the five day period. The 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th of the month is that five day period. Right now it's incurable. However, that tenant has those five days to make it curable by either securing some type of restraining order or calling the police to an attempt to uh, start that investigation. If that tenant does that during that period, then you cannot evict them, even though you may have already served them that notice. On the 17th of the month, which is the sixth day, you terminate the lease and then you move forward with the eviction. Now, at that point, the tenant has no capabilities of making this notice incur or, or curable. So let's say that on the 18th of the month, uh, the tenant says, ah, I'm going to get evicted, so I better call the police. Well, it's too late. They only have that five-day window if they're, if they're hoping to make that, that notice uh, curable. Now, it's important to remember that you stick with the timeline here because the statute is very strict about these timelines. And if you don't adhere to them strictly, then that can invalidate this particular notice and jeopardize any eviction. Now, last but not least, there are a couple of majorly important points that I want to talk about here to finish up this video. Number one is, I get this question a lot about this is, well, there's no arrest record, no conviction record. I don't have proof. Or what kind of proof do I need that there was, there was, you know, violent activity on the premises or there's drug dealing. And this is the beauty of this particular notice is the landlord doesn't need any, not even reasonable, uh, probable cause. There is nothing. They need nothing. Basically just the allegation at this point. So there is no need of proof of the activity actually happening. Now it's always good to have proof. Um, if you can get witnesses or you can get documentation such as police reports, court orders, et cetera, videos, many times when there's an incident at the apartment community, another tenant is videotaping it on their cell phone. All of that is documentation for the eviction should it be challenged. But on its face, there is no proof that's required that that activity was actually happening, unlike the 1430 where you do have to have some kind of proof to evict them. Number two, if you can get documentation, please do. That only substantiates and makes your case for eviction stronger. And, and anytime you can do that, that's a good thing. All right, last but not least here, here's my little disclaimer here. I highly, highly encourage you for fair housing reasons more than anything, and I'm not gonna go into that, but before you initiate a five day, talk to your attorney first, because your attorney may tell you to do something else here. Because remember, they're the ones that's going to have to go and litigate your case in front of the judge. And you want to give them all the tools and everything that they can use uh, so you get a beneficial outcome in front of the judge. Don't make their job harder because it's only going to cost you time and money. So consult with your attorney 
in my opinion, before you even serve the notice, but certainly before you file for any eviction. That's just my little disclaimer here, and I, but, I, but I do believe that you need to do that. Stay informed, everybody, and the best way to do that is to watch this YouTube channel. Do that by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. Notification bell, that's to notify you when I upload a new video, and join our email list. Links down below. See you all in the next video.